Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today we're going to finish breaking down complex studies. In the last video, we left off with a finished block in, so really all that's left now is to go from an idea to a painting. The block in was sort of my problem solving, and as you can see, it's pretty messy. So the goal of this phase is to clean up the edges, polish the rendering, and just eventually add in those little surface details. And here I just go around the image, starting in big areas. And I'm just using a single brush. I'm not doing anything fancy with layers or clipping masks or groups. It's basic flat painting. I'm doing on-screen mixing and just kind of cleaning up the rendering. Now, naturally, you can do this phase in any method that you prefer. But for this example, I just wanted to take a pretty traditional approach. And as you can see, as usual, I'm starting with big shapes first. And then as I sort of finish off these larger areas, then I start tightening up the smaller areas. And at this point is when I'm going to start using a few more Photoshop tricks. Because when we look closely at this reference, there's actually a lot of little stripes going on. Whether we're talking about the fence or the tiles on the roof or the siding, there's a lot of parallel lines. So I'm going to start with the fence here. And you can see that what was a black rectangle was sort of an approximation. To turn it into a fence, I'm going to need some of these stripes. And this is one of those things that's just easier through duplication. So I make one stripe, and then I just clone a bunch of copies. While working this way won't fix every problem, it's really good for this one. And I'm actually going to repeat this same process here for the siding. The only difference this time is that I need to keep it inside of a more specific shape. So as you might have guessed, this is a great opportunity for me to make a layer group that has a mask, because that just means that each of these duplicated stripes that I make are going to stay inside the lines. And again, looking at my reference, there's a lot of these stripes. So I follow the same process with roofs and siding and just kind of put it all over my image. But detail is a funny thing. It can help with realism, that's for sure. But it also risks putting your hierarchy in danger. And when I say hierarchy, I mean just the way your image reads to the viewer. Because what I want is a sense of depth. And our photo that we're looking at as reference is really lacking depth. And one of the things I can have control over is where I add detail. So I've decided I'm only going to add detail in the foreground. And what that means is I'm going to avoid adding surface detail in the background. And what this does is it tells the viewer what's closer and what's further away. Remember, I'm trying to tell a clear story. So the final step here is adding in these vertical poles. If you've ever had something like this in a foreground element, you know you have to add it at the end. If I were to have painted these in in my block in, it would have been a nightmare to work around them. So now that I'm done, it's time to put in the poles, which I paint as silhouettes first. And then I do the little trick where I lock transparent pixels, and then I can easily paint on top of them. Now I don't always include this in my videos, but I think right now it's important to talk about the takeaways from this lesson. Remember, our third goal was learn repeatable lessons. So one thing I learned in this process was visual separation. Because remember, we had overcast lighting. And overcast lighting means there's really no shadows anywhere. Because if we had normal buildings on a sunny day, we're going to have a light side and a dark side. And so buildings next to each other get natural visual separation just because of the shadow pattern. Well, on a cloudy day, we don't have a shadow pattern. I still needed to figure out a way to make the buildings visually separate from one another. So as we saw, what that meant was changing the local colors in order to kind of force the buildings to stand out. Now, even when I'm not painting city scenes, this lesson is something I can carry with me. It can apply to any illustration if it has a cloudy day. The next lesson we learned was limiting the color palette. Because cities, well, they're filled with color, right? But it's amazing how few colors I actually used to successfully convey the sense of this street scene. Because our brains actually do a really good job filling in the gaps. If a limited palette is all we present the viewer with, they are going to sort of imagine extra little details. So a limited palette helped simplify my task, and that's something that will work for future paintings as well. The final lesson was surface details. Siding, fences, shingles. I decided for this painting that I was just going to use one brush and that I wasn't going to do any photographic overlays. And then when it came time to paint my surface details, I'm actually pleased with how much information was implied just by this very simple treatment. So the takeaway here is that photographic overlays can be nice, 
but sometimes a bit of basic painting is plenty and it'll work just as well. So at this point I'm ready to call it done. And you know, I could have spent a whole day doing extra rendering, but in this case, I think an hour was enough time to learn a lot about this overcast street scene. And I think that's the final big takeaway. Studies are about learning. I could have added detail and detail, but I don't think that necessarily would have taught me anything more. A successful study is one where you leave with repeatable knowledge. One where you're stronger for your next illustration, even if it doesn't involve reproducing this exact scene. So I hope that complicated studies like this are not something you're going to avoid anymore. Really, just dive in. It's more fun than you think. I wish you good luck on your next study and have fun with it. Thanks for coming to the site.